calculation of volumes. Learning objectives. At the end of this topic, you will be able to describe the method of measuring volume from cross sections, explain the determination of capacity of reservoirs, explain the determination of volume of borrow pits, solve problems based on calculation of volumes. Outcomes. By the end of this topic, you will be able to understand the method of measuring volume from cross sections, know the determination of capacity of reservoirs and volume of borrow pits, illustrate problems based on calculation of volumes. Let us see the introduction. There are three methods generally adopted for measuring the volume. They are 1. From cross sections 2. From spot levels 3. From contours the first two methods are commonly used for the calculation of earthwork, while the third method is generally adopted for the calculation of reservoir capacities. We will see about the measurement of volume from cross sections. In this method, the total volume is divided into a series of solids by the planes of cross sections. The fundamental solids on which measurements are based are the prism, wedge, and prismoid. The spacing of sections depends upon the character of the ground and the accuracy required in the measurement. The area of cross-section taken along the line is first calculated by standard formulae developed below. And the volumes of the prismoids between successive cross-sections are then calculated by either trapezoidal formula or by prismoidal formula. The various cross-sections may be classed as 1. Level section 2. Two level section. 3. Side hill, two level section. 4. Three level section. 5. Multi level section. Now let us see the general notation we have followed. Let B equal to the constant formation or subgrade width. H be the depth of cutting on the center line. W1 and W2 be the side widths or half breadths. That is, the horizontal distances from the center to the intersection of the side slopes with the original ground level, H1 and H2, the side heights, that is, the vertical distances from formation level to the intersections of the slope with the original surface, N horizontal to 1 vertical, inclination of the side slopes, M horizontal to 1 vertical, the transverse slope of the original ground, A. The area of the cross section. First, in this section, we will see about level section. In this case, the ground is level transversely. Therefore, H1 is equal to H2 is equal to H. W1 equal to W2 equal to W equal to B by 2 plus NH. Now we'll see about two level section. Let O be the point on the center line at which the two side slopes intersect. Hence, BH, HON1 or HO equal to B by 2 into N. The above formula has been derived in terms of W1 and W2 and does not contain the term M. The formula can also be expressed in terms of H1 and H2. The above expression is independent of M and N. Let us now find the expression for W1, W2, H1 and H2 in terms of B, H, M and N. Substituting the value of W1 in equation 1, we get Substituting the value of H1 in equation 1, we get Proceeding in a similar manner, it can be shown that Substituting the values of W1 and W2 in equation and simplifying, we get Similarly, substituting the values of W1, W2, H1 and H2 in equation, we get. Now let us see about side hill 
two level section. In this case, the ground slope crosses the formation level so that one portion of the area is in cutting and the other in filling. Solving equation 1 and 2 as before, we get Let us now derive expressions for W2 and H2. By inspection, it is clear that the expressions for W1 and W2 are similar. Also, expression for H1 and H2 are similar, except for minus H in place of positive H. Three level section. Let 1 in M1 be the transverse slope of the ground to one side, and 1 in M2 be the slope to the other side of the center line of the cross section. The expressions for W1, W2, H1 and H2 can be derived in a similar way as for two level section. Thus the area AB, ECD is the sum of areas AHD, BHE, CDH, CEH. Multi-level section. In the multi-level section, the coordinate system provides the most general method of calculating the area. The cross-section nodes are provided with x and y coordinates for each vertex of the section, the origin being at the central point, h. The x-coordinates are measured positive to the right and negative to the left of h. Similarly, the y-coordinates are measured positive for cuts and negative for fills. In usual form, the nodes are recorded as below. If the coordinates are given proper sign and if the coordinates of formation points A and B are also included, one at extreme left and the other at extreme right, they appear as follows. There are several other methods to calculate the area. In one of the methods, the opposite algebraic sign is placed on the opposite side of each lower term. The coordinates then appear as the area can now be computed by multiplying each upper term by the algebraic sum of the two adjacent lower terms using the signs facing the upper term. The algebraic sum of these products will be double the area of the cross section. Thus, let us see a problem based on concepts learned till now. A railway embankment is 10 meters wide with side slopes 1.5 to 1. Assuming the ground to be level in a direction transverse to the center line, calculate the volume contained in a length of 120 meters. The center heights at 20 meter intervals being in meters 2.2, 3.7, 3.8, 4.0, 3.8, 2.8, 2.5. Now let us see how to determine the capacity of reservoirs. Reservoirs are made for water supply and for power or irrigation projects. A contour map is very useful to study the possible location of dams and the volume of water to be confined. All the contours are closed lines within the reservoir area. This is a typical case of volume in which the finished surface, that is, surface of water is level surface. The volume is calculated by assuming it as being divided up into a number of horizontal slices by contour planes. The whole area lying within a contour line is measured by planimeter and the volume can be calculated. 
Let A1, A2, A3 and so on till AN be the area of successive contours. H be the contour interval. V be the capacity of reservoir. Then by trapezoidal formula, by the prismoidal rule, where n is an odd number, length of the reservoir at the top is equal to L plus 2 of nh, where h is the depth of the reservoir, n is the slope. Width of the reservoir at the top is equal to B plus 2 of nh. Let us see a problem based on the previously seen concept. An excavation is to be made for a reservoir 20 meters long, 12 meters wide at the bottom, having the side of the excavation slope at 2, horizontal to 1, vertical. Calculate the volume of excavation if the depth is 4 meters. The ground surface is leveled before excavation. Now let us see about measurement of volume from spot levels. In this method, the fieldwork consists of dividing the area into a number of squares, rectangles or triangles and measuring the levels of their corners before and after the construction. Thus, the depth of excavation or height of filling at every corner is known. Let us assume that the four corners of any one square or rectangle are at different elevations but lie in the same inclined plane. Assume that it is desired to grade down to a level surface a certain distance below the lowest corner. The earth to be moved will be a right truncated prism with vertical edges at A, B, C and D. Figure. The rectangle A, B, C, D represents the horizontal projection of the upper inclined base of the prism and also the lower horizontal base. Let us consider the rectangle A, B, C, D of the figure. If HA, HB, HC and HD represent the depth of excavation of the four corners, the volume of the right truncated prism will be given by Similarly, let us consider the triangle ABC of the figure 4.13. If HA, HB, HC are the depths of excavation of the three corners, the volume of the truncated triangular prism is given by Let us see about the determination of volume of a group of rectangles or squares having the same area. Let us now consider a group of rectangles of the same area arranged as shown in the figure 4.12. It will be seen by inspection that some of the heights are used only once. Some heights are common to two rectangles, such as at B. Some heights are common to three rectangles, such as at E. And some heights are common to four rectangles, such as at F. Thus, in figure, each corner height will be used as many times as there are rectangles joining at the corner. H1 is equal to the sum of height used once. H2 is equal to the sum of height used twice. H3 is equal to the sum of height used thrice. H4 is equal to the sum of height used four times. A is equal to horizontal area of the cross-section of one prism. Then the total volume is given by Let us see about the determination of volume of a group of triangles having equal area. If the ground is very much undulating, the area may be divided into a number of triangles having equal area. In this case, some corner heights will be used once, such as point A of figure, some twice, such as at D, some thrice, such as at C, some four times, such as at B, and some five times, such as at E, and some six times, such as at F, and some 
seven times, such as at J. The maximum number of times a corner height can be used is eight. Thus, in the figure 4.13, and each corner height will be used as many times as there are triangles joining at the corner. H1 is equal to the sum of height used once. H2 is equal to the sum of height used twice. H3 is equal to the sum of height used thrice. H8 is equal to the sum of height used eight times. The total volume of the group is given by. Let us see a problem based on concepts seen previously. A rectangular plot ABCD forms the plane of a pit excavated for road work. E is point of intersection of the diagonals. Calculate the volume of the excavation in cubic meters from the following data. Summary. Let's summarize the topic. There are three methods generally adopted for measuring the volume. They are 1. From cross sections. 2. From spot levels. 3. From contours. The various cross sections may be classified as level section, 2 level section, side hill 2 level section, 3 level section, multi level section. Volume by trapezoidal rule is given by Volume by prismoidal rule is given by. The volume of the right truncated prism is given by. The volume of the truncated triangular prism is given by. Volume of a group of rectangles or squares having the same area is given by. Volume of a group of triangles having equal area is given by.